Is there stability in the studio, Bart? I think there is. Okay, cool. Uh, so how was your weekend, sir? First off, what's the mug? Uh, the table. Yes, Arsenal. Yes, of course. So that maybe some of that luck will um, brush off at Atlanta United. Um, there, you, there you go. Uh, so there are things to uh, discuss. Where where would you like to, to go first? Do you want to go refing down here first? Do you want to talk about uh, the W draw and Copa America? It's been a while since you've been here. Where do you want to start? Uh, well, it hasn't been a long while since I've been on. I've just haven't been on with you. Uh, <laughs> I, how, what was it like? What was it like filling in last week? Um, it's weird talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're recording like that, you're just talking to yourself. Uh, it's crazy. Um, no, Rich, I did not watch the Liga MX final. Sorry. Um, I was doing shenanigans. Um, both oh. nights this past weekend. <laughs> So, so you were you were in a multiple shenanigans zone last weekend. Yeah. Um, did, did you at least have fun, sir? Fun was had. Fun was had for sure. Okay, just checking. So uh, for those who had not had the chance, Soccer for U.S. Uh, uh, episode 75 is now out on the network. Uh, quick review. What'd you, what did you and U.S. Keeper talk about on episode 75? We talked about the W Gold Cup draw and the Copa America draw, what it means for the U.S. and um, also – about the partnership between CONCACAF and Comnibal, which, um, you know, I think a lot of people have always wanted these two confederations to merge. I don't think that's ever going to truly happen, but things like this do kind of um, help each other and fill in weaknesses that the other has. So as I explained, CONCACAF has a bajillion member and associations. Uh, Con Comnibal has 10. And, and come to ball, you know, in the past for their Copa America competition, they brought in other teams. But this is, you know, allowing them to expand and bring in regional rivalries that people care about, not necessarily, you know, Japan or Qatar or stuff like that. You know, it's, this is a legitimate um, regional competition now. And on the women's side, um, you know, for the U.S. specifically, it brings in a couple of better teams outside of just Canada, uh, which is which is nice for for both men's and women's competitions which is nice uh you know yeah. when you when you look at the these competitions you know you have it's going to be a busy four years for this particular hemisphere because of all of the competitions coming in and, and it's going to be a true challenge for the governing bodies and for the leagues yeah and it was a point that we discussed in our number one this is going to be a hell of a juggling act over the next four years to figure out, okay, what can we do here? Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? And make it all work while you're still trying to be shown on an international platform. Well, I think one of the things that I saw uh, first off was the with the new, what are they calling it? The new Club World Cup, International Intercontinental Cup, whatever they're calling it. Sure. Um, is that it? That will interfere with both MLS League and Gold Cup and probably to some extent Leagues Cup. Um, so I'm curious how MLS will handle that. They might just pull out of the competition altogether because it's uh, like a cash go. cow leagues cup. You know, there, there's the shot. I was waiting for that. I, I was waiting for the shot. I I, I do want to. I have thoughts. I, I think I think. <laughs> uh, but we could get to those after roughing down here if we want yeah, to. Sure. Yeah, I figure let's do that. But uh, but I figured that your initial salvo of uh, of. Uh, Bart of, of you saying that Don Garber hates soccer. I figured that was your <clears throat> shot. Well, that was a joke because kind of a joke. World Soccer Talk put that out in a tweet um, in one of their articles. And and it's true. I mean, look, it's, it is verifiable that Don Garber was not a soccer guy before he became commissioner of MLS. Business um, you know, I think I don't think it takes a soccer loving person to run a good sports business. What I think we're seeing now is you have a lot of people who aren't interested in making soccer the prime, not making the sport, the primary focus. They are making too much of the business, the primary focus. Um, and, and it, it, it is unfortunate. Um, I think more than the teams pulling out of us. And, and by the way, I do have to, I do have to kind of calm everyone down a little bit. Um, they are just playing their reserve roster. So yeah. All this, like, oh well, how are we gonna? They might be they're they're gonna pull a sanctioning from MLS. One, good luck with that. I'm sure um, MLS has better lawyers than U.S. Soccer. And two, t I think technically, if you're playing your reserves that are still being paid by the club, it counts. Um, 
And I think what's frustrating, and John, you talked about this, you know, in the first hour, is it's just frustrating that MLS was not willing to loosen their roster restrictions to make this less of an impact on their team. Because I think it would make a lot more sense to me if you're if you say, look, for US Open Cup, your MLS roster, you can expand it to maybe you say, okay, well, MLS teams can use up to 40. Yeah. On you know, on your roster. So that gives you the ability to add just for cup competitions. And that's what you say. You have your MLS roster, Mm -hmm. you have your cup competition roster, and and it gives you a chance, like for Atlanta United, it gives you a chance to bring in a Nick Firmino type of a kid who is clearly teetering on that line anyway, obviously, or was anyway. Um, And he could have helped you in Open Cup, in Leagues Cup, when you just needed to kind of fill the roster. and it's just, I, again, as I tweeted when this first came out, MLS ran away from this challenge instead of making it an opportunity to truly grow the sport, grow their brand, and hopefully, uh, at least with U.S. soccer, what they're planning to do for it next year, make this a cup competition worth winning. Uh, and MLS decided not to. And it's sad because the only reason they decided not to is because they don't see the business value in it. Yeah, well, and I, I tried to to go through it in hour number one with number of matches and compare it to other leagues. Yeah. I mean, again, the, I forget who said it, but the match congestion is totally fabricated because MLS decided to make up a stupid little tournament with ML, with Liga Mekis. And I'm sorry, I know it's entertaining, but y'all did this. It's the meme of the person, you know, uh, I forget the actor or the comedian, but, you know, the meme of him shooting the person in the in the chair and going, why did you do this to me when it's, you know, or the the bike where you put the stick in the, in the wheel and go, Oh my goodness, I can't believe that someone would do this to me after you did it to yourself. And it's like, yeah, the match congestion is bad because you did this. Um, And honestly, with, when it comes to leagues cup, it's, uh, it's not impacting them as much because you're breaking for it. You're not doing this during your league season. So with open cup, if you're playing up to what four matches total, Again, yeah, well, just if, if allow go, them to like, increase the roster size. Yeah, if you in leagues cup, you could be two in group stage and then possibly seven. Right. You go all the way. So everybody's but playing. You're correctly. taking a break. Yeah, that's the thing, right? This isn't adding more matches necessarily within the regular season. This is just adding more matches, but you're not playing other matches around it. And I, I think that is one of the downfalls of Open Cup. That said. Again, MLS could have just figured out a way to make this work for them, and they just chose not to. Yeah, and and, and I think that it would not surprise me if somewhere before the season, between you know, after after the Christmas season, after we've exchanged all of our gifts under the Festivus tree and had our feats of strength and airing of grievances, that you know that something was done to address this. It would not surprise me if there would be some kind of a tweak leading into Open Cup going into this season because of the hue and cry that we've seen so far. Yeah. Well, and again, I think what it's going to come down to is you have to make it somewhat financially lucrative. And from a U.S. soccer pers- perspective, there are a lot of ways to do that. And something that I've wanted them to do for a very long time is find a presenting partner that will add to that purse. Yes. Um, and, and truly, I mean, you saw what NWSL did with their Challenge Cup and I don't like the challenge cup format. I think it's a little weird, but um, they prioritized it. They got a naming rights part, a partner, you know, they added more money to the, the, the total purse and for the winners. So that's an easy thing that us soccer could do. Um, you know, they're best friends with Coca-Cola. Now they can get someone like that. Um, you know, they're 20 minutes from Delta. They could go, you know, knock on the doors of some of the Delta pilots they have down there in Peachtree city and just say, Hey, <laughs> how do you want to do this? You know, some of those Delta execs, I'm sure would be willing to come up with something. Um, Someone get Ed Bastion on the phone. Yeah. my my. I've always thought, though, I thought uh, for me, it would have made the most sense. And this is something that I, you know, I didn't get to. My be- new best friend, JT, and I didn't have time to talk about this last week. But uh, I think it actually would have made a lot of sense had they or if they tried to go find like a Expedia or IHG or something like that to be the naming rights partner, add more money to the total pot, but also what you're doing is taking some financial strain off of the lower league teams by saying, AHG, we're the sponsor of the tournament, and we're also giving 
you know, lodging to yeah. the teams that are traveling. Um, but that also plays into soccer as a whole ecosystem because every kid who plays any sort of comp- uh, competitive level soccer is probably going to have to stay in a hotel at some point during a tournament or whatever. Well, now you can, with IHG, you can work something out with, you know, officially licensed U.S. soccer clubs or whatever you want to call it, yeah. you know, where that that could be some sort of a discount as well. So it's just, an again, it is a missed opportunity because they refuse to take on the tiniest bit of challenge did MLS and now U.S. soccer having gone 100 plus years of not really making the tournament the big thing it should be kind of getting caught with their pants down a little bit by not acting quick enough to make it the big tournament that it should be. All right. And so joining us here for uh, Bart's segment, Jarrett joins us in hour number two. So good morning, Jarrett. We're discussing uh, what, what is what is not going on now with Open Cup and Major League Soccer. I <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you walked into it, Jarrett. Good morning. Well, no, it's yeah. Good morning, buddy. Um, good to see you. Um, you could i feel like i could i could open up a giant field and place one bear trap in that field i could put up a sign i could hand you a map don garber's going to find that bear trap buddy <laughs> not not a week of wins from mls when it comes to their decision making after the uh, owners meetings i'll tell you that much no and there it all feels so unnecessary in the sense that don't do what you've been doing. Let teams let teams sh- just kind of ship the whole thing. Well, they they don't have they don't even care because we, we know teams do that. We know we we watched the yeah. LAFC team last year <laughs> send a bunch of kids. Um, yeah, they sent you, LAFC too. They sent yeah. they sent low yeah. no, Let them up. do that because we it and that's exactly it. Jared, and, until we get to the semifinal and final, like as yeah. a fan, I don't I. I hate to say this. I don't care that much. Like it's the same. I feel the same way about FA Cup or care about yeah. Cup. You know. And I love I love cup competitions. Um, yes. But we but we but yeah. To your point, we do that in the FA Cup. We do it in the Carabao Cup. We do it in the Gummy Bear Cup. We do it in they did the Buy Play Cup in Scotland at times. <clears throat> Just if if you don't care, then send your second team. And if this is all coming back to an argument with the with the players' union about you know compression. I mean, negotiate in the next CBA. The, you, I mean, I'm sorry. You had lots of games to play. <laughs> like, it, everyone's, everyone decided we're, we're to good. add League's Cup. Everyone decided to add League's Cup to their lives, yeah. and um, which, which I know that Bart is even happier about because now League's Cup will get an even bigger focus, I'm sure. Um, but just, just make it to where, like, if you don't want to play your guys, then don't play your guys. Now, this opens up another can of worms. Where we say, hey, uh, NCAA, I would invite you to remove your head from your ass because don't forget, your academy kids can play in MLS Next Pro games, which will be playing in USOC games because the second teams are going to be playing. They're going to be playing against professional teams in USL and every other uh, league. But And kids can do that and keep their eligibility for college. But if they suit up for the MLS team, they lose their eligibility. Why? Because Mark Emmert is huffing some sort of noble gas on a daily basis, and nothing the NCAA makes does makes sense. If you would just free this crap up and let your academy kids play with the first team and not burn eligibility the way you let them play with the second team and not burn eligibility, it would be much easier for me to sit here and say, hey, we're going to put the MLS teams in the U.S. Open Cup. Oh, we don't want, Our first team guys don't want to play. Cool. We're playing academy kids. Yep. I don't give a damn. Also, your academy kids could function in and out of the academy and the first team and get real exposure. Oh, and by the way, it's uh, the former governor of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker, who has uh, assumed the Mark Emmert role, by the way. But I understand the Mark Emmert. Well, this is a problem that Mark Emmert created. True. Yeah. Yes. Mark, Mark Emmert does not get to escape the guillotine. No, no. No, no. The, the the variable guillotine. I'm not literally going to cut his head off. No, no, no. I, I understand that, but yes, it, it, Charlie Baker is just continuing the the train of thought that was established by Mark Emmert here. So no, it's uh, by the way. If anyone has any tips on how to explain nil to my mother, um, that would be great because that's my idea for my dad's Christmas present this year as a donation to the WVU nil. Ah, 
organization in his name. Um, I'll do it as soon as, like, I, as soon as as soon as I can figure out how to explain <laughs> the infield fly rule to people. I, I she was like, "Oh, I heard you have an idea," and I had texted my brothers about this last night. I was like, "This is my idea for Dad's present," and I was like, "Just talk to Grant; like he'll explain it better." Than that's he's way, there with that's you. Way, that's the <laughs> way that I can explain it to your dad is you want to you're finally getting to say the quiet part out loud after all of these years of all of the players that Huggy Bear got to bring into Morgantown and, and have the basketball team that Why was are we talking about? I didn't want to talk about West Virginia basketball this morning. <laughs> well, but they're better they've been better traditionally than West Virginia football. So it I, could I, be I, worse. Imagine for a moment that your weekend relies on happiness being provided by Arthur Smith and Brendan Rogers. It, it does that was rely my a little weekend. bit on, Arth, on Arthur Smith and Desmond Ritter. Good Lord. Uh, uh-huh. I want both of them far, far away. But that was only my Sunday. My Saturday was sleeping in a bit and waking up to see that uh, Brendan Rogers had uh, given hearts a two-goal lead in Glasgow. So, Yeah. Hey England, you can have him back. I swear to God, you can't. See, Michael Head, I I understand you would never. I I don't understand why you would never contribute to an NIL because to me, I'd rather do that than contribute to the athletic department because the NIL is going straight to a kid, you know, in theory. Well, and uh, and, and also once again, you're you're putting the end to the hundred dollar handshake, and now yeah. you're sitting here and you do it publicly. Yeah. Because I've I I was that I would I would donate to. I mean, I donated a lot to the you know, I donated specifically to like programs of the athletic department i wouldn't donate to like the athletic department as a whole but i would like okay here's my donation to men's soccer women's yeah. soccer you know uh, but now i would much rather donate to an nil yeah uh, fun because i know that money is probably going to go to a kid and, know, that, and that's probably the best way to describe it to your dad it's like you yeah. want to oh no dad gets it it's my mom that i have to sell this to because okay, it's well, then- also listen the, my dad is 60 almost 65 years old the man does not need another thing <laughs> also, he's like every other father in the world where if he wants a thing, he goes and buys the said thing. Yes. Um, so. Think, please explain this to my family because when everyone asks me for my birthday, like, what do you want for your birthday? Nothing. If I want something, I'll go get it myself. Yeah. yeah. It's it's tough. And like my mom's the same way, right? All parents are. Um, granted, I'm, I'm getting to that point too where it's like, oh, I need it. So I'm going to go buy it, right? And then, yep. now I'm like, I don't know. Can you buy me new tires for my uh car please there <laughs> that's where we're at now absolutely but uh you know that's the thing so just explain it to your mom about bringing <clears throat> in the best athletes yeah. into your campus and yeah. doing it above the table now as opposed to underneath that's that's what you're doing okay. uh, michael right. i can't fight every battle on nobility okay <laughs> sorry I, I i understand but if, if everything we do is about righteousness and, and everything, then we're not going to ever get anything done. Sorry. Uh, uh, you got to ref- play, play the game that exists. Yes. Refing down here for this week. There are a couple of instances, and Rich actually brought one to the table. But let's start with what you saw in, in, in the Premier League where uh, I guess a handball isn't a handball in a big game. You know, I, I will give them this because I was watching that game. And there was another incident in this game with a Manchester United handball it was at midfield and very similar the ball kind of bounced up hit the player's arm and and the referee immediately just waved it off and so at least in this game there was a consistent of yes it hit his arm but we do have to have some allowance for the fact that random things happen and the ball is going to hit you in places you don't predict it to hit you um and and that's kind of what happened here also in my opinion, if we want to be, you know, strict about clear and obvious, I felt like it was not clear or obvious that the ball hit the player in a non playable spot on the arm. Remember we allow for a handball to go to the armpit and that includes the arm, right? So we, we have like the armpit and it, you know, is that here? Is it here? Where on the, you know, where is it? Is it, you know, how far down does that go? And so for my, for my vantage point, it would have been tough for VAR to come down and say, oh, that absolutely hit him in a spot on the arm that is not playable. Yes, absolutely. So then there was that, and, and then there was uh, another moment. Before we get into one from uh, uh, Liga MX that Bart has brought to the table, I have a question for you as uh, as an official anyway. Diogo Delo picked up two of the fastest yellow cards in, in the history of man. 
And I mean, it was it was rapid fire. It, literally, it was ace jack, blackjack out the door. I mean, literally, it was like one, two, and you're out, you're gone. When it comes to descent, I guess double descent, a double descent on your houses. When it comes to descent, how much of a leash do you have? How much do you of, of a leash do you give players? What are your what are your your hot yeah. buttons and things like that to where you want to sit there and go blackjack dealer on somebody? And I guess let's let's start with the Delo situation and what you saw with with the bang bang <laughs> and gone, and we'll go from there. Well, similar to like if you're just in the game as a whole, there are certain words that you're just not allowed to use. <laughs> Period. <No. laughs> um, And there is, you know, I think part of that is uh, when you're talking about dissent, like you don't get to call the referee names. You don't get to use certain words toward the referee. Um, You know, there, there's always exceptions and there's always under trying to understand intent versus uh, intent and tone and direction. And, and, you know, there's so many times that people just get mad and they yell, you know, F off ref, you know, And, and that's not like, they're not, doing that as a form of dissent in the same way that this was right. This was aggravated yelling at a referee. (laughs) And so probably I couldn't, I couldn't really tell, but I mean, he probably called the referee a name or used a bad word. You know, I mean, once you do that, you don't really have any sort of defense. And then you just got a yellow card. Mm -hmm. Why are we arguing? (laughs) Um, because it wasn't like he got a yellow card for a foul and then argued the foul and got the 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 next yellow card, right? That was not the order of operation. He was just mad and got two yellow cards for dissent. And that that I don't get because, I mean, personally, my what I always do, and I'm sure the referee had the same conversation of, I've got a yellow card out. Do you want me to use it again? I just keep holding it. You know, <laughs> I, I, I just I keep it in my hand and I talk with it, make sure they see it. Um, and I'm sure the referee. He doesn't have any he doesn't have any responsibility to say that, but like, I'm sure he was like, buddy, I just got, gave you a yellow card. That's enough. And then he kept going. Well, I said that was enough the first time you kept going. Here's another one. Uh, it's, it, there were people mad at the referee for this. And I'm like, this is all on the player. This is all on the player for continuing to dissent. And not even argue a call. Like, it wasn't, you got your second. You got your yellow card taken and go home. You kept going. That is on you. That is not on the referee. That is on you. That's on you. <sighs> yeah. And it was uh, it was an interesting ending, Jarrett, where, uh, where center ref won absolute blackjack dealer. And you just want to sit there and, and, and go to the player in particular after he gets the first. Where were his teammates? like brah i'm just picturing the scene from the breakfast club about you want another detention yes it is that's another week it's it's very that jared (laughs) it's very that and and it's going to be interesting to see what happens because if he said certain words right Mm -hmm. that's going to be actually i mean that's going to be some games added on Mm mm-hmm yeah, it is. And it's there's, just, a, there's, a, there's an art form to yelling at a referee and doing it in a way that like you're getting your you're getting your thoughts across without getting sent off the field. There's an art form in doing this. Yeah, Nix, are you done? <laughs> Not even close. Yeah, Not even close. Exactly That's another week. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it felt like. <laughs> so Diogo Delo is John Bender. And uh, and the, and the center ref, the center ref is like this. The center ref is he's he's like this. Yeah. Mess with the bull, you get the horns. Absolutely, yeah, that is absolutely true. Uh, now I want to see Diogo Delo in a long coat. That, that's what that's what I want to see. And uh, you know, then just raging and climbing through roofs and things like that. That's the next thing I want to see. And for what it's worth, getting him back for not another teen movie, which was a great film, like a objectively hilarious movie that also might have like been the start of the end of good parody films. Like it might have triggered the the downfall of good parody movies. But getting him back and replicating the scene with the original actor was just top class. Yes. Uh Badger, one of our players just said F. Got a straight red. GHSA red. Oh, absolutely. No, that Georgia High School mm-hmm. does not play around with cursing. Nope. 
we had a catcher get sent out, uh, get, get, get ejected, uh, for doing that. And, yep. uh, I mean, he, he, look, that, 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 that dude, I love him to death. He'd argued with a brick wall if the wall had, had would hold still long enough. Yes. And the worst mistake the official made was because he screamed, he screamed at F Bob, but he didn't scream it at anybody. Like he just screamed it kind of in general and got ejected. And then he decided, well, I'm already ejected. It's the end of the season. I'm going to get my money's worth. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. um, one, one more, one more moment. And it's been brought by Rich Ransom before Maddie Cruz comes in and, and does her, uh, her hit and run for prem and proper the review this week. Uh, the, I'm going to bring what Rich brought to the floor and it is in the links in the Twitch pitch. Not while Guzman got a, a second yellow and a red uh, America and Tigres. So it, it is a beautiful piece uh, of over the top gamesmanship in Liga MX in, in the grand final where Guzman goes and literally takes a dude out at about 40 yards away from goal. I mean, he is outside the 18. He's at the 35. He's at the 40. Hip check, out the door, yellow, red, gone. Now, the question I have for you in follow-up, and Rich has done a yeoman work in posting the link to the, to the expulsion. When it comes to loitering, after the yellow or the red, second yellow turns into a red or a straight red, Guzman was going to let everybody and his mom have it on the way out the door. And he's going to talk to teammates and he's going to keep talking and he's going to come back and talk to the ref. When it comes to an expulsion, when it comes to that red and dude, you got to get out of here and you loiter. How do you handle that? And how have you handled that in the past? Well, it's, <clears throat> this is where the other officials uh, on site need to step in, right? This is not the responsibility of the referee to walk a guy off of the pitch. It's just, it's, you know, um, I'm, I'm watching this now and it, the, yeah. this video is very long. Um, <laughs> it, you know, he's, don't get me, I, I don't understand though, in this scenario, one, what he's mad about. Like, <laughs> it's like, uh, the, there, there's nothing that, like, there's nothing he, like, he, <laughs> He tackles a guy, like yeah. you said, 40 yards out of – Yeah. It's a red card. It's a red yeah. card. Yeah. Um, this is where other officials and uh, administrators in the match, that that's their job. Mm -hmm. The referee can't – isn't – that's not my job. I can't deal with that. Um, and really, the only thing I do is I, you know – Start my watch and go, okay, that, that was right here when this happened. And by the time we started play, it, you wasted 12 minutes of time, and I'm going to add 12 minutes of time on. Um, this was also in stoppage time, so that's even more fun. Um, but, yeah, it, it that is where you have to have someone not a referee needs to be in – like a security personnel, a, an officer of some sort, they need to be there to do that because – Clearly, at this point, he's he's loitering. He's where he shouldn't be, and he needs to be taken off. Um, but the referee can't can't do that. That's not that's not our job. We give them the red card. We say you got to go, and we don't restart play until he's gone. You got to go. Get out of here. You know? All right. So what is what's going on with uh, soccer for US POD seventy five is up. What else is going on? Uh, well, this week and next week, we probably will be taking, a, um, some holiday time off. We'll see. Um, if we get the itch to talk about soccer, we might, um, obviously this week and the next week, all the holidays time, um, I will personally be traveling up to Charlotte on next Wednesday for, um, hopefully a bowl game that will make me happy. We'll see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, It'll be fine regardless. I'm going with a bunch of friends and family, so it'll be fun. But, um, you know, we'll see if Neil Brown can crush my dreams one more time this season. <laughs> we could have gone yesterday up to the uh, Falcons-Panthers game. Tickets were, like, less than $5. I, I, I was joking um, and that my uh, AO, our uh, executive board here in Atlanta, I was like, we should just buy tickets and go. Yeah. This is it's scouting, right? That's All a business expense. We're scouting up that uh, – that stadium because uh us is playing hopefully playing there in a semi-final couple months actually some really good eating. yeah there are some really good eateries downtown 
Uh, all right, we're going to do the hot Don't t- give Charlotte any benefit, John. Do not talk nicely about that terrible cut-rate cookie-cutter city. No. Oh. <laughs> Uh, man, Charlotte, Charlotte is a bank that just happened to build a couple houses around it. I, look, there are a lot of great cities in MLS, and then there's Charlotte, okay? <laughs> there are many cities, and Charlotte is one of them. Uh... <laughs> oh. Hey, Uh-oh. take it easy, guys. You're talking about my hometown of birth here, okay? Wow. Were you in Charlotte, or were you outside of it? I was in Charlotte. Uh, wow, okay. I mean, I've... I moved in 92, so, yeah, so you, I think you got out of there. That I was definitely, the you've ever done. <laughs> yeah, definitely Mecklenburg County. Okay. Uh, I get, there's a, there, there are a lot of great places to eat around Charlotte, for sure. Uh, Charlotte wow. started this war, and I'm here to lose it. I, yeah, listen, that this is <laughs> – don't talk smack if you ain't ready for it. That's all I'll say, David Tepper. There um, you go. I'll talk smack about Charlotte, even though they <laughs> didn't score a touchdown yesterday and – Still won. Yeah, and I and I ha- and I played uh, Zach Wilson instead of uh, Bryce Young as my starting quarterback. Thank you very much. All right, Bart, mm. be good, my friend. We'll catch up with yeah. you. Yeah, I'll, I'll be gone next week to talk more about another MLS city that I don't like. I, I'll okay. pick one at that point. Well, Maybe but talk- yeah. well, but next next Monday is the Christmas show, so we're not doing next Monday. So whatever week, uh, whatever day next week, just let me know. All right, I'll just pick one. Yeah. There you go. Talk to you in a bit. All right, bye, y'all. There goes Bart. <laughs>